everybody, and welcome back to the Chaluminati Podcast, episode 128. I, as always, am one of your hosts, Mike Martin, joined by the Marty and Doc Brown of LA, <laughs> Jesse and Alex, right? Yeah, you guys, perfect. Alex! <laughs> Alex, we gotta go back in time! Jesse, man! It's your kids! I got the most vocal fry of anyone! <laughs> <laughs> how does he Fuck have him. how does he sound like that he's like 20 years old in that movie <laughs> he's like a talent he's like somebody shrank him 25 percent. i don't understand Acting. yeah he was 20 in that film that makes sense no, i guess i don't know how old he was i don't know how old he was i have no idea yeah i don't either actually i've only ever seen the first one i haven't seen the next two I, i'm not I surprised. I keep forgetting you don't live in the rest of the world with us i'm not surprised <laughs> i got i've seen the first one though like that's the, the, good, that, the, that's the, the one to see one. it the is three. the one that's to see the cultural right. touchstone yeah. one like, yes. that's the one i, I went to go see yes so that, that one i've got under my belt thank you but very much now you've never seen biff jr go like eek on the and he goes and he gets all big you, you yeah, gotta you've see, never you gotta seen yeah. buford tannen Oh my God! At ZZ Top, oh, just like hey, my new. chilling. <laughs> Next time, so every time I get, I get together with you guys in like real life, we'll just knock out a movie. We'll just hang out and watch the the second and third Back to the Future movies. <laughs> that's next. That's on the list. Next, two movies per visit. I like that. I like that plan. Yeah, that's Walk. the new. That's the new. Uh, that's the new Patreon bonus is the education of Mathis. Yeah, right. A, a new tier where we just watch movies I've never seen with commentary. Yeah. Over it. <laughs> Patreon. It's a great place to be. It's one of my favorite places to hang out I'm when I'm not doing anything. I'm so honestly. glad you said that because if you're out there today listening yeah. to the Chiluminati podcast, you there's probably right something now. wrong with you already if you're here. And second of all, I know how it feels. It's that time of year where you're alone. You got you got you know. There's nothing. There's nothing going on. You're feeling that lack of warmth. You're missing exclusive minisodes and. And bespoke artwork by masterful bespoke artists, and and you hate ads. <laughs> you know that holiday <laughs> feeling I'm talking about. Do you guys I know am that one? All too familiar with it, Alex. Please continue. Yeah. Well, let me tell you about a place called patreoncom slash pod. I'm going to say that one more time. <laughs> patreoncom slash pod, where you. Got it can give us your money and keep the show afloat in return for PBS <laughs> style rewards. When you say keep the show afloat, it does like we are guys. It's, it's bad. It's <laughs> math. It spent it's, all the money on I did. You he have bought a bunch re- research of technology. Big box it's going to pay games. off when I have the evidence in the videos. <laughs> Our podcast is going to make it big. <laughs> he became the guys that put the dinosaurs together wrong yeah. and <laughs> went insane. We lost him. Uh, no, uh, it just keeps us a weekly podcast. It lets us do all kinds of crazy stuff. Next time that there's not a pandemic, we're going to do a lockdown in a haunted location that's coming. That's brought to you by Patreon. That's in the pipes. I don't know if you guys realize that's in the pipes. You know, we had a live show in Los Angeles. That's behind us. There's nothing else in the pipes. This is coming straight down the pipes. Call Super Mario. Clean out your pipes. Got too much Illuminati coming Mm. down it. No. Mm. Clean out your pipes with Uncle Mm -hmm. Mario. Mm -hmm. Are we starting to regret making Alex the designated shill person? Starting to? (laughs) Dude, if I didn't do it, you guys both, you literally made a video like the other day. You were like, I'm literally terrible at advertising my shit. It's true. I'm very bad. Very bad. (laughs) Uh, We've got to bring Alex on specifically to balance that, I guess. But that's not all you put me in charge of. No, 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 no. Because I'm also in charge of today's episode it's true is there anything else we need to shill before we get into it if you want merch if you want to go buy some merch the yeti.com slash collections slash chaluminati for some sweet t-shirts posters stickers and new stuff coming mm-hmm. soon including something you might be able to hug in bed at night and something that you might be able to <laughs> jesse <ingest. Cox's> name <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna make a jesse cox body pillow all for everybody we should, yeah, just, yeah, body we should just do like those little like blind box vinyl figurines of ourselves <laughs> yeah you'd get one of one of us yeah there's Why only three pieces Jesse's naked yeah that's Jesse, weird the, that's the, you oh, got the rare naked jesse variant <laughs> <laughs> he's got Perfect, his me undies on 
Okay. <laughs> please sponsor us. Anyway, continue. Oh my God. I would love that. Anyway, I would love some free underwear. Please help me undies. Help me. Uh, little story time for you guys. So the other day I was watching a movie called Yodorowsky's Dune. It's a documentary about this sort of like wizardy old avant-garde director guy. He put together this like, he, he made like insane art films uh, that were like visually stunning, unbelievable. He had like an insane reputation. People were like, I want to work with this guy. Uh, but he ended up like traveling around like the Fellowship of the Ring and putting together like an art fellowship uh, and a pitch for this like huge, the biggest like groundbreaking this is in the 60s, like the groundbreak early 70s, biggest movie ever, a 12 hour like epic of Dune, the movie Dune. And even though like immediately when he pitched it to everybody, like everybody was just like, that's insane. No way. Uh, the effort that he put into compiling that jump started an entire generation of sci-fi movie makers uh, in the same way that Dune inspired like every sci-fi thing. Like he like everything from alien to star Wars is now it's like rooted directly in the production of Yodorowsky's Dune, like literally like Dan O'Bannon and H.R. Giger got together to make Yodorowsky's Dune and then they made Alien, like straight up. Uh, and and this guy, it, it wasn't even actually Dune. It was actually like a movie that was kind of based on Dune that had its own sort of ending that it was supposed to be like a religious experience. And like people were kind of offended that he would do that. But he was like, you know, he said it much more indelicately than I'm saying it. But he said it's something like you have to absolutely ruin somebody's baby to make it your own baby. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think I know. I, I feel like I've heard that quote or like there's something akin to that quote in the past yeah. where it's like, yeah, you're, you're, you're always basically the idea is you're always going to make an inferior version of what you're trying to copy. If you're just trying to copy it verbatim. Yeah, so, that sounds like a Kubrick thing. Mm, and you know, I'm so glad that you said that because there is one space movie that was not inspired by Yodorowsky's Dune. And that is because even though it looks like it's from that time period, it is not. And it still might be the best of all of them. Uh, and instead of it being a, a cast off from Yodorowsky, it is indeed the brainchild of one very, very dedicated and detail oriented man. That's the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey by Stanley Kubrick, the yeah. auteur director. Uh, and I ended up watching this the other day because it had been a couple years since I had seen it. And I was like hype off the like Dune documentary. I watched it on my like big wall projector thing in my living room at like 2 a.m. 2001 you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I watched it uh, by myself. It was 2 a.m. It was beautiful. It's like why I made the episode Have today. You, uh, pause. Have you yeah. seen this movie, Mathis? 2001 A Space Odyssey? I have not. Dude. What is happening? <laughs> I'm sorry. This is I'm like sorry. learning Man, that there listen. are movies that exist that are perfect for you that yeah, you sure. have never seen is blowing my mind. <laughs> have you seen X Files? Had uh, a couple episodes. Have you seen X Files the movie? No. <laughs> See? <laughs> no, no. Hold on. Have you seen Mystery Science Theater 3000 the movie? Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, wait. Wait, wait. The movie? The movie that the came mo- out in theaters. Yeah. No. <laughs> The show, though, he's yes. all over. <laughs> the moment it comes it. on Listen, to screen had, near you, he's out. I guess it is like twenty years old, so you know, yeah. whatever. Uh, but yeah, it's beautiful. And I was gonna say, Mathis, if you have not seen this movie, I haven't. Yeah, good. I've movie. seen bits of it. I've watched Red Letter Media's breakdown of yeah. it, even and, though I've never seen the movie. Yeah, really good looking movie, but it's not. It's like a wild movie. It's like a trippy movie beyond being just like a pretty movie. It's very amazing mm. and. Kubrick wrote this movie with a dude who probably falls into a lot of our listeners' Venn diagrams. You may have heard of this guy's name is Arthur C. Clarke. He Mm. was a science fiction master writer and futurist, and he predicted a lot of things we ended up inventing later, like GPS, smartphones, and space stations, and satellites, and all kinds of stuff like that. And so when Kubrick goes to shoot this story that he wrote with this guy... We already know he's like the most meticulous filmmaker. He has like more takes. He wants to get like exact things on film. Uh, And that extended also to his special effects in this movie, which were like absolutely rigorously executed special effects. 
uh, created space visuals for that movie that honestly still like in some cases look photo real like to us, like even when compared to like actual NASA and history book images, uh, even though the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey, I thought this movie was from the 70s. It actually came out one year before the actual real life Neil Armstrong moon landing on July 20th, 1969. Oh, cool. Or was there a real Neil Armstrong moon landing on July 20th, 1969? Don't say that in front of Neil. He'll knock your face off. <laughs> because, my friends. Uh, do you hear that? Hang on. Do you hear that? What's that? It's the distant rallying cry of every weird racist out there who believes that nobody landed on the moon as well. Here they come. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. There are some people out there who might smugly remind you uh, that within a decade, everyone who has ever been to the moon will probably be dead. Uh, In fact, there are only four men, I think, or less now, maybe, that are still alive uh, who have been to the moon. And after that, uh, there will be no one who has ever been to the moon. And from there, there is only a hop, skip and a jump from us ever being able to prove it happened at all. And in an article from the Paris Review, which was my main source for this episode, a guy called Rich Cohen said something that I think was pretty good. If you wouldn't mind reading it for me, Jesse, I'm going to drop it into the Twitter chat for you. Of course. Into the, into the show there. DM. Mm-hmm. Thanks to Joybird for sponsoring this episode. And we all know what home means to us. It's our personal space, the place we make our own, and for some of us, the place we spend the most time. And so making your home look like you'd like it to and feel like you want it to is the most important. And with Joybird, you can get that. On top of that, get ready for Joybird's Black Friday and Cyber Monday deals. And with Joybird, Ordering furniture online has never been easier or more fun. Choose from over 18,000 customization options or browse curated collections to find the perfect piece for your one-of-a-kind style. Book a virtual showroom appointment to chat with a showroom stylist from the comfort of your own home. From rich buttery leathers to the softest velvets, you're sure to find the fabric and texture that's right for you. You can even order a free fabric swatch kit to feel fabrics before you buy them. Joybird is committed to creating quality furniture and a more sustainable future. Each piece is made with incredible care using responsibly sourced materials free of harmful chemicals. Through partnerships with groups like One Tree Planted, Joybird is helping conserve and restore Earth's most precious natural resources. Quality craftsmanship, stain and scratch resistant fabrics, and limited lifetime warranty, Joybird furniture can handle anything your family throws at it, literally. Joybird stands by its quality and craftsmanship. If it's not everything you hope for, send it back with the 90-day return policy. Create a space that brings you joy with Joybird. Visit joybird.com slash chill and get 35% off your purchase. That's 35% off at joybird.com slash chill. That astonishing feat will pass from living memory into history, which, sooner or later, is always questioned and turned into fable. It will not exa- be exactly like the moment the last conquistador died, but will lean in that direction. The story of the moon landing will become a little harder to believe. Yeah, pretty weird to think about it in that in that sense. Like to harder to contextualize a time period when that would be a thing. You know what I mean? I mean <laughs> Which is kind of what I mean. Question yeah. stuff that happened in the forties. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. lots of things know. that happened in the forties. A lot oh, of things God. that definitely happened in the 40s. Yeah, definitely 100% <laughs> happened in the 40s. Literally, uh, no question yeah. <laughs> about it. They <laughs> fucking happened. Uh, in that same article, the author goes on to say that he's actually met three people who've allegedly been up there. And that the one thing he noticed between them that uh, is that they were all pretty whacked out, actually, in one way or the other. Like how there's Edgar Mitchell who went up in 71, I forget which Apollo he was in, he talked about the warm alien consciousness that enveloped him the entire time that he was in space. Uh, And That's also known as disassociation. Yep. I Uh, I do have to wonder about, yeah, like, I mean, if you see, if, if, if it's real, and I'm gonna believe it is, yeah, the idea of seeing the world and how yeah. microscope like here's how here's all you need to know about that that warm embrace or whatever it is go on youtube and google like size of the galaxy or oh, size God. of the universe and watch those videos where like it just keeps expanding out and by the end of it you're like 
We're nothing. I am stardust. Dude, chuck on your fucking no. Oculus, bro. Get your fucking yeah, mind true. blown. No, it's it's not in like to th- I, I've, I've often and genuinely thought about like just the idea of what it must have been like to step on the moon, which is just a rock in space being flung around our planet and to see our Earth like a like it would be a big moon, like a giant like and just to, that must be your brain mustn't be able to register what's actually like happening like your brain has to have to like disassociate a little bit to accept plus the insane amazing fear, shit that's happening adrenaline like space yeah, is all of deadly it. like your whole body's out of whack plus yep. then to return and be thrown immediately back into like all the petty bullshit of earth yeah i imagine that is a trip for anyone it's probably so. like pure trauma i have no idea how people ever did this. yeah uh buzz aldrin uh Speaking to that feeling, Buzz Aldrin literally punched a dude in the face for yep. asking him if he would swear he'd been to the moon on a Bible. Uh, he was just like, go fuck yourself. Of course, I've been to the moon, you piece of shit. I'm not going to fucking swear on your Bible to prove it. Because then you're just feeding into these. Yeah, people. I fucking went to the moon, you bitch. Uh, but yeah, I think I think because we don't really consider it worth doing anymore. Uh, and it's been generations since anybody went up there that the idea just seems a little bit and like ridiculous to cut, to cut you off too. But there's also that fact that like back then, especially the people probably forget is like, we did this not for the betterment of mankind. We were in a cold war. We were in a, yeah. we're a space race with our enemy to achieve that for America. It wasn't just the scientific pursuit of knowledge. We were like at kind of like this weird cold war with Russia and we were trying to one up them and beat them. And we did it. And then we were done. Yeah. I mean, that's AKA what Star Motive. Wars. <laughs> yeah. The Star yeah. Wars program isn't like they were yeah, huge no. fans of Luke. They literally like, all right, get ready to blast missiles out of the sky with lasers and shit. Like, that's, yep. yeah. you know, one of the scariest things that's going on right now in real life is that Russia was like, yeah, we just blew up a satellite. It was easy. Yeah, it's nuts. Yeah. They were like, yo, it was easy. Get fucked. What's crazy is that satellite explosion. Then everyone who is in space right now was straight up just like warned just like the movie gravity yes they they were like one bad day away from reenacting that movie they were like there is debris heading your way and i was like oh my god that is literally the plot of that movie yeah well weren't they for a while i don't know if it's still going every 90 minutes they would orbit back into the debris field and then they'd have to go take shelter and wait it out and then they go out and i don't know i don't know if that's still going or not but that's scary as hell yeah and speaking of astronauts and things that may or may not be real uh you could see how, because of that, that some idiotic sort of like self-righteous science denying Americans might decide that it was a hoax just for that reason. Mm. But there's also oh. a book from 1976 that is called We Never Went to the Moon, America's $30 billion swindle that was <laughs> self-published by a technical writer who at the time worked for, or at one time, actually not even at the time at one time worked for an engine making company called rocket dine, which sounds like it's from fallout. Uh, and his name was William casing and casing was absolutely obsessed with the fantasy of man visiting the moon. He was completely romantically obsessed with it. And he was completely wrapped up in the whole USSR, USA space race. He was keeping tabs on it. Uh, But also, though, from his time at Rocketdyne, which, by the way, he left in 1963, which was a while before the moon landing. Right. uh, He also felt that achieving this dream was pretty much impossible for anyone on either side. So in his mind, by publishing this, what was his reasoning for saying it was impossible? We'll get into that. Okay, because <laughs> this seems like random Joe. Schmo- he just Schmo he was who's... just saying based on his opinions as a scientist, engineer, and technical writer, Rocketdyne made engines. I guess something about that he decided these, he was. Just, these are the kind of this is the kind of people the go do do your own research crowd point to. Yeah, exactly. These are the people that they point to and like go do your own research. You're like, no, no, you're supposed to provide me with the research, and then they point to these kinds of people like, oh, yeah, you don't really know anything. Yeah, and so but the point is, this guy's looking at the news even in real time. Yeah. Sort of creating these sort of like theories that are like the big theories that still are the main theories today. So he's he's these things are he's making these observations in real time uh, because he's just decided that it's not true. And so in his mind, he's (laughs) opening people's eyes to the truth. 
based on a few key pieces of evidence that he outlined and which most people still cite today and which we'll get into right now. And then also give the quote unquote fact based response that yes. moon landing truther deniers use to deflect criticism and maintain their insidious psyop of moon visitation. I am so ready to be red pilled. Let's yeah, go. No, I'm just kidding. Actually, what's going to happen right now is I'm going to give Mathis the conspiracy theory to read and then give okay. Jesse the evidence used to debunk it. But actually, I, I wrote it in the form of a little skit for you guys to read with each other. So I'm going to <laughs> spice it up. I like yeah, it. So I, twist on spice it up. Yeah, so I'm going to give you guys this in uh, <laughs> Twitter and then you Quinter? guys, you guys can just go 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 for it cold this is a cold reading <laughs> this is a cold read live on tape good hype i'm waiting for it to pop up there it is okay <clears throat> uh, like all says know, jesse oh, mathis sorry I have yeah, to yeah. Scum, I'm like, yeah, all right sorry <clears throat> we all continue. know the american astronauts planted a flag on the moon because there's crystal clear footage of it that was broadcast worldwide back in 1969 but now think back on that footage and how the flag looks so big and proud, waving in the breeze, and ask yourself, how can a flag wave in the vacuum of space? Don't you know the moon has no atmosphere? I want to throw up after reading that paragraph <laughs> because I know the answers to all of that. Continue. <laughs> Sorry, all right, I'm good. We're good. Actually, you just got bought by another secret plan by NASA what? called Planning Ahead. The scientists at NASA having not been born yesterday, knew the flag would look like shit in zero gravity and actually secretly added a cross beam to the flagpole to keep it as straight and visible as possible for the cameras. And as for the waving you swear everyone saw it doing, that was just our resident face puncher Buzz Aldrin <laughs> twisting the damn thing as he tried to get it to stand up in the moon dirt. All right, fine, but then riddle me this. The moon is a lifeless rock, right? I mean, we know there's some cy Cybertronian wreckage up there thanks to 2011's Transformers Dark of the Moon, but that's derelict, and the only other light source up there should be the sun, right? Well, then how come there's shadows being cast in all kinds of different directions, right? Like, could it be that just, could it be that just like Transformers Dark of the Moon, the, the set for the moon landing was also lit by a Hollywood style lighting crew. This is we are very good actors. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> OK, yeah. excellent. Top now, tier. This one's pretty good, or at least it would be if I hadn't watched a Mythbusters on it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that episode. Yeah. Yeah. There would be if there really was only one light source on the moon. You said it yourself. The moon basically has no atmosphere to speak of. So what's going to stop any of the light from Earth or sun or lights attached? the astronauts or their gear from casting generally huge shadows all over the place not to mention just the uneven topography of the moon itself someone didn't watch the mythbusters it's in here hey, alex. <laughs> yikes man i would have said that was was harsh even if i wasn't just reading what alex wrote but we also wrote this line too so who knows what i really think Anyway, it doesn't matter. Maybe they just had their lighting situation on lock. It was still shot on a movie set. Want to know how I know? The blast crater from the lander. You ever see anything land on raw soil before? It's a mess. Dust flying everywhere, huge shapes on the ground. But we get none of that here because all this stuff was really just placed here delicately by the prop department. Don't believe me? There's even footage of a moon rock with a letter C on it that some intern probably scribbled on the wrong side of it with a Sharpie. You're really going to invent a backstory. You, Mathis, <laughs> yes. are really personally going to invent a backstory about an intern and a Sharpie with zero evidence to back it up? What His are name you? was J Jack. What are you, Zach Baggins? <laughs> I, would never, I would never pretend to be that cruel imposter. <laughs> what you see as a letter C is absolutely just a post-production artifact of the photo scanning process. If you look at the way higher resolution images that small one with the C was cropped from, you see it's not actually even really there. And as for the blast crater, tell you what, with 20% of the Earth's gravity, physics simply feel different than they do down here. You know how you can't put someone in the face very hard while you're underwater. It's like that. The lander basically touched down with the power of the feather from the beginning of Forrest Gump. <laughs> it didn't take very much thrust for it to take off again either. 
Okay, that's physics, all right. Uh, I wouldn't understand that. Okay, well then, what about stars? There's like tons of stars in space, right? And the only reason we can't see as many there really are at night is from light pollution, right? So how come there's like zero stars in any of the moon pictures? Shouldn't it be like observatory quality up there? I mean, sure, at nighttime, but at the time of the moon landing, it was morning on the moon. And the light from the sun reflecting off the surface of the moon simply washed out all the lights of the, from the stars, just like it does here every single day on Earth. I mean, honestly, just think about it. First time a human being has ever gone up to another celestial body and put their feet on it. And you think they should have done it all at night? That's, you know, that's crazy. What do you think they have? A death wish? And actually, you know what? I'm tired of this. Let me just knock the rest of these out real quick. Who was filming Neil Armstrong? Who was the first man on the moon? The camera attached to the outside of the lander. Okay, Jesse, geez. I... Why is it Neil Armstrong <laughs> holding a camera in the reflection of Buzz Aldrin's visor? Because it was attached to the front of the spacesuit. Why didn't they die in the Van Allen belts and crisp alive from radiation? They learned about it and how fields fluctuated and went at a time when radiation was well within acceptable levels for two hours of exposure. Why isn't there any physical evidence? There is. Not only do we have modern scans that show topography matching exactly what's in the background of the Apollo footage, we have even higher res modern scans that can still see their footprints. But Jesse, those could just be photoshopped. <laughs> Maybe the government's still covering it up, sure. But we have scans from China, India, Japan, not to mention moon rock. We have 382 kilograms of moon rocks from the Apollo missions. We gave the rocks to 135 different countries and they all tested it. To death, they matched the rocks the Soviets brought back from their unmanned mission in the 70s. And if you think after all that, that somehow this is still a hoax, then you have to answer me this question. How did they do it? And no one ever found out or talked about anything. Okay, 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 chill. You know, I'm glad this is a skit because once I finish this line, it's over and we won't even be fighting anymore. <laughs> but I guess Alex isn't done with me yet and I still have to say, please sign up for our Patreon at patreon.com slash It's the best website of all time. It's the best deal of all time and you'll be supporting the best podcast of all time. All right, now this is it. This is the end of the skit. The end, the end, the end. Back to reality right now. End Great. scene. Great. End scene. We did, it. we did it. Welcome back. Excellent job, the everybody. Skit. Well written, well performed. I deserve. I hope we see a bunch of fifteen dollar patrons at Patreon. After it was that. like it was watching fantastic. the decks all over again. Uh, <laughs> and to answer that last question, I made Jesse ask you: William Casing really did have a theory as to how all this shit went down, uh, how it happened, what, which is crazy to me because I'm sure you're going to tell it to tell it to us. But it's nuts because you have to then buy into the fact that there's this. Multiple thousands of person conspiracy and not a single leaker. And yet we can't even run our own personal government without literally everything being leaked to us all the time in some fashion or another. Like yet yeah. this, this 40, 50, 60 year long idea still has borne no leakers even on their deathbeds. Yeah, Are man. you fucking kidding me? They really took care of those guys. Yeah, they blopped him in the back of the head. Yeah. Ooh, Clinton style. Well, he says they did. <laughs> they, Don't do says, that. I like this. <laughs> We're well, in the conspiracy hole now. I'm just going to start whipping out conspiracy jokes. Here we go. <laughs> he said they did build at least some type of real looking rocket structure down at NASA, but that just before takeoff, they all secretly got off the ship, got on a plane, flew out to the middle of the Nevada desert where the broadcast really was shot. And then allegedly to back this up, there's testimony of people who are out in Vegas who t actually testified seeing Neil Armstrong, Neil Armstrong walking through the hotel lobby with hot babes hanging off his arms and Buzz Aldrin <laughs> fucking around <laughs> on the slot so machines. I want, I, want that, fuck that. I want that to be real. That, I want that to be what actually happened. I want him to be walking out being like, I'm getting late at night. No moon for me today, boys. <laughs> the funniest thing about it is like the way it's described is like as if. It's happening in real time, but they were what? They were on the moon for like two hours. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I don't, yeah they yeah. weren't out there long. They weren't there for like days yeah, and days and yeah, days I mean. and days. Uh, and so, yeah, they were in Vegas. And then that apparently only lasted for a little while because then they flew right back out to Hawaii 
where they were able to sneak back into the re-entry capsule just before the news cameras arrived to film them uh, getting out of the little, you know, the pod that they were floating in together. Thank you to Felix Gray for sponsoring this episode. And every time I get a reminder that Felix Gray is sponsoring an episode, I kind of forget because I have been wearing the Felix Grays every day and I often forget I didn't just buy these myself. The blue light glasses that started it all five years ago, Felix Gray realized and set out to create eyewear that would improve daily screen time. Since then, Felix Gray has been on a mission to create a better relationship with technology. Felix Gray blue light glasses lenses filter 15 times more of the most important blue light that affects you. Whether you're heading back into the office, back to school, or back to whatever, like me sitting in my office in my home staring at my monitor for 10 hours or so a day, you can count on Felix Gray. Visit felixgrayglasses.com slash chill. Both non-prescription and prescription are available. Check them out now at felixgrayglasses.com slash chill. That's F-E-L-I-X-G-R-A-Y glasses.com slash chill. Free shipping, free returns, free exchanges, felixgrayglasses.com slash chill. I can't imagine spending a day not wearing them at this point. And if you think that sounds like the plot of a movie, you would be right because Warner Brothers put out a movie like two years after that book came out called Capricorn One. OJ Simpson is in this movie. Goes down exactly the same way. Elliot Gould is in this movie. Man, uh, you know, I so wish this was one of the very few movies I have yeah. seen. It would just been so weird to add to the list. It's, but yeah. Well, appreciate. we can definitely watch it. I am a. No, I don't know if I want to, honestly. Well, here's what it's about. These astronauts are supposed to go to Mars. Uh, but they get taken out of the capsule just before takeoff because there's some sort of malfunction with the craft. And they're like, fuck, we have to like still do this or else our reputation is ruined. So you're going to come with us to this desert location and we're going to like do a live stream from a fake desert base to make it seem like we went off without a hitch. And then they were supposed to be snuck back into the capsule for a splashdown. But then in the movie version of the story, something goes wrong while the while the capsule is coming into the atmosphere and it burns up. And so the world is watching and the capsule and they burns. They're all dead. Interesting. And, yeah. and so it's a cool little twist. Yeah, The astronauts are like, oh, no, are we going to be stuck here forever? And they're like something like that. And they come in to kill all the astronauts and the astronauts escape in like a plane and the plane gets shot down in the desert. <clears throat> and uh, two of the astronauts get killed. OJ goes down. Uh, but one astronaut who is played by James Brolin and Elliot Gould who believes him shows up at the astronauts funeral service and blows the lid off everything. And he's like a hero. Uh, <laughs> and then they would say the movie director was waiting for that to happen in real life. Well, let me tell you what it's even weirder than that, because this is something I did not know before reading the Paris review article. There is another conspiracy theory about the first attempt at a manned moon landing, which is the Apollo one mm -hmm. uh, mission. Uh, and that's the official and, and obviously most likely story is that the three astronauts that were preparing for this mission, Gus Grissom, Roger Chaffee and Edward White, the second were killed in a fire on the launch pad during a rehearsal test. But there are some people out there that think that maybe instead they were silenced after deciding to go public with the truth about an earlier hoax attempt. But then that makes me wonder about things like Apollo 13. Yeah. I mean, like, you, can't, you can't think too critically about this stuff. Apollo 13 right. already, is like Apollo 13 is crazy because that was like truly an adventure story in real life. But it's also a failure of NASA. And if we're in a yeah. time period where we're like all positive news for fake NASA, why on earth would they be like, yo, we might watch people die in space right now? Like, why would they, like, give us, like, a thriller instead of just, like, more positive news? Right. It was still yeah. the Cold War. It wasn't like, you know. Yeah, it doesn't make us look great to have Tom no. Hanks getting stuck in a lunar lander falling through the atmosphere. And all yeah. this still ignores the fact that we sent moon rocks to 135 other countries and not a <laughs> single one ever came forward and was like, this is just rocks from Earth, bro. Unless the, aliens, bro. Unless they the run dark fist is closed more tightly around us. Get, it's insane, man. I, <laughs> this is it's it's such a big 
giant hunk of jizz to swallow and be like, I believe it. Well, I mean, it just dude, doesn't... have you seen what's been going on today? Do you know what today is? What? Oh, God. What's what? Today probably, is what? November 22nd, right? Yeah. True. Famil- familiar 11, 22, 63. You know this date? The date of the Kennedy assassination? Yes. Oh, God. What? Okay. So yeah. there's like a spinoff of the QAnon cult that's in Dallas. That's like ruining. Oh, these are the people that think. They're, <laughs> they're like waiting ru- for his, for JFK Jr. to show up? They're, no. Okay. So they. Oh, okay. I was going to be well, like, is it that one? Yes. No, it is. Like- it is. But it's getting oh worse God. and worse. I was just watching a, like a Vice thing about this where like or reading it where like their lives are falling apart. These people in these cults, it's like a profile of one family where the wife just like fell down this rabbit hole. She's out there. She's like JFK Jr. is coming back. They keep moving the goalposts. Now it's JF. Yeah, now it's JFK and JFK Jr. are coming back. JFK on- Jr. Wouldn't he be like 112 years old if he was alive? I don't know, but he's he JFK Jr. Ancient? No, no JFK. Yeah. JFK. JFK, JFK, maybe, JFK, but JFK yes. Jr. No, he, he, he died, died in, in a the plane 90s. crash. Yeah, or yeah. early 2000s. Yeah, I know he died. I'm saying, but if he was still alive, JFK how old would Jr. He be? would be, I don't know, 60, maybe. But, but he JFK, would be, JFK, yeah, he'd be about 60. JFK 60 Sr. Old. would be scary old. Uh, but he, I think he's 113 or something. That's what I was thinking of. Yeah, because yeah, because because you like you said, they're now expecting him to show up too. And I'm like, yeah. what? And so now they're like talking about like the only way to like ascend to the next level of consciousness is to like die. And apparently that's like the time when the government starts to get involved directly is when they start what? just. And, and he, he tweeted something out about like. I'm headed to Waco, like to the fucking like Waco spot, the fucking where the oh shit went God. down in Waco. Like it's it's getting wild. Uh, it's getting wild over there. Don't believe uh, in crazy shit. But that's what they asked you to, sc- the, you know, like this, this thing about these three guys, these three like good, honest, hardworking astronauts that died in a terrible, tragic accident. Right. To believe that in spite of all this evidence against it being just exactly what everybody says it is. Right. You have to then swallow a pill just because you like and are obsessed with this one theory that you genuinely have passion for. You have to then accept these other theories about things that you don't really care about that are like way dumber, crazier things. Uh, but that, you know, don't necessarily they help justify it. Yeah, exactly. They're not real. They're damaging things to believe. And th- the more you have to stick to your guns, that's how you become a fanatic of something. You know what I mean? That's how you get right. deeper in the hole slowly yeah. over time and why so many people for those that for because when we do things like this, we get a lot, uh, we get a few people who don't understand how like Atlantis, the belief in Atlantis, for instance, can lead to like racism and racist yeah. beliefs. That's how like Alex perfectly explained it. You believe in this one thing. You think Atlantis you is s- cool. That's how it starts. Yeah, you think it's fucking cool. And then as you go deeper and deeper, you have to start believing these weirder things because they're all part of the package and they help explain other and things. And you didn't really but, have an, an opinion of like race politics mm-hmm. before that. But now that's getting overwritten. Like your ambivalence towards it is getting overwritten by like some mythology that's like all this cool shit that you like. But then also you got to believe that there was like a, there's yeah, a better it's race. It's not like all at, you don't read all at once and then be like, well, I believe in Atlantis. So, but I don't believe in this. So I'll never believe it. No, it's, it's piecemeal over years and years and years to give you yeah. a modern version without naming names, zero names will be named, but we have a friend who, you know, we love star Wars. We had a, like a little star Wars <laughs> thing. And we had a friend who like was not happy with the last Jedi <laughs> And he would watch videos on the show. About that we, this was a yeah, show that we used to record and release only in private. This is a, this yeah, is, this is a <laughs> yeah, this is an amazing example though. Cause I know what you're going to say, yeah, but he would like go watch other videos where people thought the exact same way about how the last Jedi sucked. And then more stuff getting what was recommended to him. That was in that same vein of like why the last Jedi is bad. But instead of it being like, here's my opinion on film and, and you know, Critique. the creation of movies, it was like, well, it's because the cast it's like misogyny it towards like, Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah. The algorithm already is so tweaked in that general, general direction. All you got to do is keep the thumbnail and the broad like name of the video relatively the same as any other anti Star Wars like critique video. And then you start sprinkling in little things. Now, imagine you're 13 and yeah. you start coming across that stuff. And yeah. so even it was funny because even he was just like, it started to get really racist. I was like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> so it's yeah. just, it, it still happens. Yeah. yeah and speaking yeah. of ever deepening conspiracy theories uh, and uh, minds slowly deteriorating to the point of insanity, 
It wasn't until after 1980 that the big brain theory about the moon landing was born, which wraps us back around to our intro about 2001, and more specifically, its director Stanley Kubrick and the various ways the moon landing may or may not relate to his 1968 film, 2001 A Space Odyssey, and his 1980 film, The Shining. Ooh. Ooh. As I said earlier, 2001 was a collaboration between Kubrick and Arthur C. Clarke. And because Clarke was good at predicting the future and because Kubrick was happy uh, contacting the correct engineers, the correct physicists, anybody that he needed to to make it look as fucking real and possible and realistic as possible. Think about like how what's his name? Uh, Dark Knight guy, Inception guy, how he did to make Interstellar look like super scientifically accurate where he's yeah. like using movie technology to model a fucking and black hole like better deep in conversations with scientists and experts. Similar situation going on with Kubrick, right? Which makes sense. Uh, <clears throat> 50 years later, this movie came out in 68 and it looks better than star Wars almost in a way. You know what I mean? Uh, and it's especially wild because in 68, there are literally zero computer effects. It is physically real objects only mostly done in camera that's why everything feels so terrestrial and real uh so and this is where we step into the spider verse if (laughs) if nasa and the u.s government happen to be looking for extremely realistic footage of men in white suits exploring space perhaps with the goal of convincing the American public that this actually happened for political reasons with 2001 fresh in their minds from one year previously, Kubrick would be the first person they might call. And then suppose for one reason or another that Kubrick said, yes, I will make your hoax movie. And they said, money is no object. Maybe he could have knocked it out pretty quickly if he had the proper team behind him and all the cutting edge techniques he developed on 2001, a space odyssey. And some people have even speculated that 2001 could have secretly been funded by the government in the first place, which provides motive for Kubrick to make maybe the most classic movie ever made, Mathis. Uh, well, can I ask <laughs> what the government's like motivation to fund 2001 A Space Odyssey would be? Yeah, so that he can simultaneously make the film of his dreams with Arthur C. Clarke and also have a... Hollywood budget to develop the same type of footage and effects. I see. So that he would make. It's like his reward for like accepting trial, government yeah. work. It's a trial okay. run for the effects that he's going to use to hoax the moon landing. Sure. That's also his best movie that he could ever make. Sure. The peak of his career. You know, I don't even know if that's the peak of his career actually, but like that's a that's a that's a critics that's a, that's for a critic to decide. Yeah, that's a that's a hard conversation. Uh, but then that's a win win in a way, right? But then sure. imagine as the years go on and people are inspired by this fake story, and our culture is changed by a false sense of optimism and exceptionalism that he created by making a movie, suppose that Kubrick began to feel guilty about what he had done. Uh, You know, he can't confess at this point because it would destroy America. Uh, But So he's got to make a confessional movie, obviously. Yeah, maybe it it builds up. Maybe it builds up into bad feelings. I hate this theory. It's going to gnaw away at him. It's going to make him feel unwell. Till finally, in the late 70s, it all becomes too much. He has to purge it from his his consciousness in the form of the 1980 film, The Shining, starring Jack Nicholson (sighs) and Shelley Duvall. This just proves to me conspiracy theorists are unimaginative because this exact same formula is applied to close encounters of the third kind aliens and the governments want to like and the wizard inch. of Oz and the dark like, side of it's, the moon. Right. Exactly. Literally. It's, it's, like, <laughs> it's the same. It's the same formula. Just cut and paste and you twist, twist some details to fit the certain narrative you want. Okay, But it. to be fair, Mathis, <laughs> have you seen the shining? Could no. be, could be rife. Could be rife <laughs> with moon landing hoax imagery. You don't know. It's true. I have seen, though, <laughs> I have seen 30 Seconds to Mars music video that references the show. That's pretty good. Okay? That's, pre- that's basically, you're pre- you basically, I mean, that's, that's the cliff notes. The same thing, really. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's what I figured. Tell, you the know guy's what? getting a blowjob from a dog man. I'll let Kubrick know and he'll be cool with it. Anyway, the theory goes that he made this weird version of a horror movie, uh, which was actually adapted from Stephen King's popular book version. 
and was nothing like the book, yeah, as it, everyone it, will tell you. It really is a poor adaptation. Stephen King hated it. The holidays are upon us. Man, you know what that means. All that dieting you've been doing is probably going to have to go by the wayside for a little while. That doesn't mean you have to turn your breakfast into an unhealthy meal. We're all trying to eat better, but healthy breakfast doesn't have to be boring. Magic Spoon has the amazing flavors you love, but without all that bad stuff. And it's amazing as a midnight snack before bed, as I've said before. Sure, you're going to have to give up some of your dieting, but your breakfast can still taste like sugary cereal while being healthy for you. With zero grams of sugar, 13 to 14 grams of protein, and only four net grams of carbs in each serving. There's only 140 calories a serving. It's keto-friendly, gluten-free, grain-free, soy-free, and low-carb. You can now build your own box. The available flavors to build your own very custom bundle are cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter, blueberry, cinnamon, cookies and cream, and maple waffle. All you have to do is go to magicspoon.com slash chill to grab a custom bundle of cereal and try it today. And be sure to use our promo code chill at checkout to save five bucks off your order. And Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it's backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund you your money, no questions asked. Remember, get your next delicious bowl of guilt-free cereal at magicspoon.com slash chill and use code chill to save $5 off your order. Thank you to Magic Spoon for sponsoring this episode. Uh, and before people realized that it was like a masterpiece movie, critics, like when it came out, critics were like disappointed, mixed re reactions, because in reality, this theory says that the whole thing was really just this big encrypted confession that he was behind the moon landing footage and that it was driving him nuts and that all the big deviations from the source material that made everybody so mad was actually just him adding in this extra layer of meaning. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I know yeah. what you're trying to say. Yes. Yeah. Uh, but of course, you know me, <laughs> it wouldn't be a theory without evidence to back it up. Of course. So let's get into it. First of all, to back up the theory that Kubrick was deviating from the book for a specific intentional reason, uh, they cite the red Volkswagen that you see wrecked along the side of the highway as Halloran, uh, the other guy with the shining, uh, drives through the snow. Uh, he's driving along the highway. In the, in the original novel, the Torrance family drives a red Volkswagen, exactly like the one that he sees Jack, like just destroyed underneath the truck. But the one that they drive in the movie is the most conspicuous color possible. It is bright yellow. And Stephen King's red version is wrecked on the side of the road. So they're saying something very similar to what we were saying at the top of this. And I cannot believe you naturally segued into Kubrick for me with where we were talking about how uh, to make something your own, you have to desecrate the version that came before. Uh, and so that's what's going on here is they're saying, oh, okay. So he's saying, you know what? Fuck that. That's not what this movie's about. This movie's about the yellow fucking Volkswagen. Uh, so let's look at one of the more obvious changes between the book and the film uh, in the book. But really quickly, before yeah. you jump in and explain how this relates to the moon. This is something that's done all the time in the most recent version. Even though I can't say, like, definitely go watch this. I just started watching the Cowboy Bebop remake on Netflix. Yeah. And in the mm. first, like, ten minutes, the opening scene takes place at Watanabe's dude, casino. Dude, I know, dude. And so it's like, oh. It's already mashing the movie into the, into the same plot yeah. as the first episode. Yeah. So, they're, I mean, like, they're already just like, yeah, we're going to change everything about what you know, but at the same time, it's going to be the same thing. That's They do that all the time. That, yeah. Welcome to Hollywood. Yep. Unsolicited yep, opinion is. about the Cowboy Bebop remake after seeing only the pilot. It is a great serialized cable television show that is themed after the anime Cowboy Bebop. I mean, here's the thing. It's not bad, but it's not like it's, it has good. nothing. It has nothing to do with Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> yeah, it's like, all right. <laughs> it's I've weird. watched. Yeah, I'm four episodes in. I'm like, hey, I'm you, if you like it, turn it off and watch Cowboy Bebop. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. So let's look at one of the more obvious changes between the book and the film. You don't have to turn it off. I'm not trying to be a hater. I, I'm going to, I'm going to watch the rest of it. Just go You're watch already. It's too late, don't, hater. Don't, don't shill for big 
M O for big MOBA. Okay. I will big show MOBA. for big Netflix. If they want to have a Chiluminati show. Hey, oh, Netflix. Did I say chill? I meant Listen, chill. Buzzfeed's unsolved or whatever. <laughs> just stopped doing episodes. The perfect time to fill a void in the market. And, is all I'm saying. Uh, we do weirder shit than them. Yup. Okay. Uh, in the book, the evil haunted epicenter of evil in the hotel is, is room number 217. Uh, Stanley Kubrick said that he changed it to room 237 in the movie because the hotel that he filmed the intro at is a real hotel and they have a room 217 that they didn't want to be like ruined forever by being like the notorious evil hotel room in the shining. Obviously this is a pre internet age thing because you know, today people will be lining their asses up to go stay in the fucking room from the shining. Uh, but even weirder than that, according to the movie room Two Thirty Seven, uh, which is literally about this exact thing. Uh, that's in where part. I have seen that dumbass. I've seen them. That's why I know this. Yeah. I have seen, yeah. Thank you. That's uh, what it is. According to that, they looked into that and the hotel room does not uh, it, it, like they, they also have a room like the story doesn't check out. The story doesn't check out like they don't have a room 217 or something like that. Uh, however, coincidentally, the moon just so happens to be oh, 237,000 miles from the earth, roughly. Just kidding. I'm saying it was not a coincidence that that is the case. Do you get it? <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it was on purpose. Uh, and if that does not convince you on its own, consider the Overlook Hotel, the hotel from The Shining, as America, a hotel in decline, built on the graves of indigenous tribes, filled with kitschy American imagery and paintings of the Old West. And imagine the winter snow is this. the mounting pressure of the Cold War and the pressure America was feeling at the time to outperform the Soviet Union in the space we, race. Imagine, we, we imagine, all, if you will. <laughs> we got all of this from a number change. Not, they not read, just a number change. Yeah, that, that sort of is kind of close to the distance to the moon because the distance to the moon is actually closer to 239,000 miles. That's not, updated uh, information. Kubrick would have been operating under the assumption that it was 237,000 miles away. Okay, uh, even under that assumption, then why are we suddenly taking the entire building in the time of weather, a year that we're in, like, applying deeper conspiracy meaning to it? Uh, I know that you haven't seen the movie, <laughs> but I'm hoping that Jesse has seen the movie. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. And you'll remember that one of the most horrific moments in the movie when she finds out that Jack Torrance has finally lost his mind is when she finds that the book that he has been working on the entire time that they have been caretaking this old empty hotel isn't a book, but is just the repeat, a repeated phrase. You remember what that phrase is, Jesse? All work. Yeah. And no play. Make Mathis a, <laughs> a crazy boy. psychopathic killer. That's right. <laughs> now, let me ask you this. What if the L's in all, oh, no. if you look at those as lowercase L's, what if they're really numerical ones, as in A11 work, as in it's Apollo, <laughs> Apollo 11, 11 work, which out. makes oh Mathis a crazy town. person? And what if, <laughs> and what if the two famous twin ghost girls at the end of the hallway? I'm sure even you, Mathis, have seen this imagery of the kid yes, driving. Yes, of course. Away. These twins are not in the book either. What if they re represent the fact that the Gemini mission was also a fake mission because the twins are twins no, stop. and Gemini. I looked up the scene because it's a twin. Yeah. Th yeah. The two L's are lowercase because all is at the start of a sentence and his a is capitalized and he has a sentence in all caps and the L's are in caps. I call that a this, convenient this would truth. Be like, I call that a convenient truth, Mathis. A convenient this would be truth. Like understood. If, understood. If Thank you. someone looked at the poster of uh, the Dark Knight and the Joker's laughs, how the ha 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 was in different capitalizations. Yeah. 
If someone looked at that and was like, well, it's obviously a cipher. Listen, that's, that's the same listen, level of I like, realize, too much. I realize I'm losing you here. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 you're not, though. I understand you don't believe this. <laughs> let me stuff, reel, you, let me reel you back the in real quick. The third A is lowercase. Yeah, no, I just want to put this H out real quick to our <laughs> listeners who are incredibly talented. We've had great, amazing Bean Boy like, histories generated. Yeah. Can somebody please take the movie Jupiter Ascending <laughs> and create this insane conspiracy? It's the only movie you've ever seen, folks. That, yeah. yeah, right. That, 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 oh that, 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 it's a giant message about how there's actual alien life on Jupiter. Can you what just do, you do think, that for me? What do you think like intents? How do they fit in there? Right. I, I want, I don't, you know, I could sit here and we interpret your dreams. You interpret our conspiracy theory. Film. Right, that's all. <laughs> I just want to thank you. I'll look on Reddit for it in the time, yeah. in the days coming. Continue, Alex. Let me reel you guys <laughs> right all the way back into my side. I'm ready, dude. I'm ready. What if I told you that in this movie, there is a scene where Danny Torrance is sitting on the ground wearing a sweater that literally has a picture of the Apollo 11 rocket on it that says Apollo 11 on the sweater, written in text on the sweater. And when he gets up off the floor, it's like the rocket is launching. And then he walks away and the rocket flies away until he stops at the end of the hall at room 237. Anyway, folks, that is the theory. There is a documentary about a bunch of different deep cut theories about The Shining. That's the Room 237 movie. Shout out to that movie, which I watched uh, to help write this episode. A lot of people think this documentary, quote, isn't very convincing. Instead, <laughs> it's, it's not. also it's like, let's do everything. Not it, just yeah. one. Let's talk about every theory. It's I would a lot. Say, it's I would a say lot. instead that those people have convinced me that they didn't understand that that documentary is about the nature of conspiracy <laughs> theories. But anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> moon landing was fake. Shout out to the article, How Stanley Kubrick Staged the Moon Landing by Rich Cohen at the Paris Review. The article, The Wildest Moon Landing Conspiracy Theories Debunked by Becky Little at History.com. And the article, The Craziest Theories on the Shining in Room 237 by Gene Trin. Wait, is this the, the episode? Beast. This is the Emma, episode. Are we done? We're done. We're, we're out. It's almost, we're almost been doing this for yeah, an hour so already, what? dude. First off, that was a fast hour. But secondly, right. What we started with Dune. I thought we were going to talk about a 14 hour version of Dune. I was ready. I was like, there's no, 14 we were, we were hours. Called, it's conspiracy called admittance through film. It's called thematic resonance, Jesse. The, the, <laughs> the theme of Yodorowsky's Dune is that you have to desecrate what's come before to make it your own. And that's what he does in The Shining. I try to not draw attention to these things because I'm an elegant journalist who crafts his stories to emerge as you think about them yeah, later. But like, are we going to ever talk about Dune though? <laughs> we'll talk about Dune. I will talk about that house that's very old someday. Yeah, one day. Uh, one day. And uh, we will. One day. And on that day, Dune will be green and the water will rise. And Muad'Dib will lead us into the future. Muad'Dib. That's not that's not how that works. That's not how any of that's this the, works. Yep. <laughs> I, you should look and, up the end of Yodorowsky's Dune. It's fucking crazy. He talks about it like watching the movie was going to make you like hallucinate, like you're on acid. Like you got to watch it, it. If you take anything away from this, watch some Stanley Kubrick movies and watch the movie Yodorowsky's Dune. Please. And the you, you only thing I know about that movie is I once read an article when it used the quote. I am drugs to describe <laughs> the 14 hour dude. And I yeah. was like, whoa, that is absolutely true. They, he had uh, Salvador Dali cast as the, uh, as the emperor of the universe. <laughs> Amazing. He had Orson, wow. he had Orson oh Welles as, as uh, the Harkonnen Baron. And he, oh, he got him on set too. by promising him to bring as part of the film's budget, his favorite restaurant chef onto set. And that's how we got him to say yes to a movie. Dude, Go watch Yodorowsky's it's Dune. It's fucking crazy. It's fucking crazy. The The storyboard artist for the fucking movie was Mobius, the like greatest cartoonist ever to live. That's insane. Yeah. You like the like a dream team for this freaking movie that never came to be. It's going to make you into a bohemian artist in 90 minutes. You got to go watch this movie. <laughs> And if anything, take away from this episode how easy it is to slip into those rabbit holes that lead to dangerous and dark places on the internet. Even when you're in your 30s and looking at Star Wars films uh, videos, you can still slip down that path. And even if you listen to everything Alex said and was like <laughs> about the about Kubrick's film and be like, no, but that all is really weird. You then still have to believe 135 other countries <laughs> are in on it. 
Oh, and are like protecting America, America, yeah. USA, the United States from itself. Uh, also, you have to buy that. Also, shout outs to Snopes. There was a video clip that was going around a couple years ago that was like new unearthed footage of, uh, you know, more moon landing no, garbage. Kubrick admitting to doing it. Ah, and uh, it's fake. It's an actor. It's like some guy who like made a hoax and it went. And that's the other thing. We're in the we're in the age of fucking deep fakes. That shit is only going to get worse as we keep moving forward because people can make anything they want, say anything they want to fit their personal perspectives. Keep an eye out for that. Let shit. me ask a question just to the audience out there. Years ago, I took a quiz for a college that was like, hey, we want to ask you about would you ever have sex with a robot? And <laughs> the rabbit hole I went down with that quiz, if they want an episode about what that was like, let us know. Let us know on the, yes. on the Reddit. I have got like it. I'm not sure how I can make a whole episode out of it, but it was a wild trip, y'all. Could and it be like a special mini so that's exclusively just your your story? I, would I don't know that. I would. I would All yeah, I know is that it dealt with this. There was a certain point where it was like, what if that robot had the face of a celebrity? And then it just right. got worse from there. And I was like, <gasps> You're like, oh, wait a minute. This is getting weird. <laughs> yeah. So if you ever want to go down that rabbit hole with me. That's like when I watched I, that yeah. show Brainiac or whatever it was called, where they pass all the basketballs around. And then they at the afterwards, they're like, but did you see the dancing bear? And you're like, what? And there is a dancing bear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Insanity. Uh, Alex, thank you for that. That was, that was a great conversational episode, I think, about broader conspiracy, too, and in mm -hmm. general and like more modern ways that it's, it's still very problematic. I didn't expect you guys um, to have such passionate and well-worded thoughts about everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, from it's time just, to time. Like, I love like I am your big I love conspiracy. I love alien, but I like the fun side of it. Like, that's why I'm always very careful when we tackle very like delicate things to just try to avoid or at least call out the very mm -hmm. problematic aspects of those conspiracies. Cause there's, they are, can be really fun and there might even be like, I'm still think aliens might be real, but like you can't buy into like the ancient aliens and all this other shit that just is so clearly not true. Yeah. And it goes for all things. It goes for space and moon landing and government conspiracy. Cause you have to buy into the idea that like, an incalculable amount of people are able to keep their mouths shut and all this other. It's just nonsense. It's nuts. Yeah. So. Uh, it's funny. I think a lot of people get the, sort of dynamic everybody talks about the dynamic of chiluminati all the time and i think they oh, I, I, yeah, I think it's one of the best parts about i the think show, they honestly. get it wrong about describing what it is because everybody says oh like mathis is full believer alex is 50 50 and jesse is uh like full skeptic right it's a good package sales uh, pitch yeah <laughs> but i would say that i am just more interested in the story without caring whether it's real or not Mm -hmm. It's not that I believe in half of the conspiracy theories that Jesse right. does or something like that. It's <laughs> yeah. just that it's just that I like to tell you what the stories are because they're dumb. like, I mean, come on, this is fucking inter entertaining, right? Like, oh, 100%. Yeah, like that's to me, that's it. And the fact that I can tell you this story and also be like, are you stupid? Please believe science. Like, come on. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that's you the, can still believe in aliens yeah. and believe in science. It's mm -hmm. possible to do both. Yeah. So you know who's probably anyway. pretty good at science? Aliens. aliens yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, right. probably amazing it's yeah. it's right exactly all right we got to go do a mini so now for all our patrons please if you guys want to support the show head over to patreon.com slash illuminati pod appreciate it a great deal we're gonna go do a mini so for that right now and we will be back next week with a brand new episode for all of you we'll see you then huh yeah that's our sign out now yep <laughs> goodbye Bye. anyway me and my wife were sitting outside indulging on our porch one night enjoying ourselves I needed to go to the bathroom, so I stepped back inside, and after a few moments, I hear my wife go, Holy shit, get out here! So I quickly dash back outside, and she's looking up at the sky in awe. I look up too, and there's a perfect line of dozen lights traveling across the sky.